Hi, I'm Maria Vularis. Welcome to the final part of my video series introducing quantum computing. In this part, I'll discuss the future outlook for the field of quantum computing and also summarize everything that I've covered so far. So what can we expect for the future of the field of quantum computing? The milestone that everyone is working towards is the first useful applications of quantum computers. This needs orchestrated effort from hardware, software, middleware, error correction theory, algorithms theory, lots of different parts of the quantum ecosystem pushing together to optimize for getting the first useful applications where a quantum computer performs a useful computation more efficiently than a classical computer can. Those applications will likely first be some scientific ones and areas like chemistry seem to be the prime contenders for nearest term applications. Another thing to look for is testing the ambitious roadmaps that have been proposed by different parts of the quantum industry. There's various roadmaps of how different parts of the industry, usually companies, are planning to make progress on building quantum computers in order to get them to these levels of being able to do increasingly large range of useful applications. And qubit counts, errors, various aspects of the quantum computers have been laid out as goals for over the next few years. So we'll see if those goals come into fruition. There's an interesting aspect in terms of workforce and workforce development, what kind of jobs will be involved and how will the job landscape change with the development of quantum computing. We're likely to see the need for more specialist engineers, technicians and software developers. A surprisingly large amount of the workforce needed for quantum computing is doing completely classical work. Of course, quantum physics plays a key role in quantum computing, but a lot of the people needed to make it happen are not quantum physicists, but more on the engineering side, trying to solve these engineering problems in building these devices. And there's a lot of software work needed to create an entire software ecosystem for the field of quantum computing. And as I mentioned in the previous episode, there's the importance of co-design or co-development. In the near future, what we're likely to see is the People work on algorithms, reducing noise and hardware, communicating a lot to work together. The way this looks is that you could think of an algorithm, maybe look at what most of the quantum gates in that algorithm are, and then focus on reducing noise in those particular quantum gates, and then design the hardware so that it lends itself to reducing the noise of those gates. So you're kind of thinking of these three parts together to try and develop the hardware and the approach to noise reduction so that the algorithm can be performed with as few resources as possible. Finally, we'll probably see lots of surprises. For example, I think some of the recent developments in quantum error correction over the past year or so happened a lot faster than people expected, in particular using various hardware platforms. There's always need to expect the unexpected surprises in the future of the field as well. Now I'd just like to summarize everything that I have covered in this series. I've put it all together on this timeline, along with some commentary of what's been happening at each point of the timeline. We had these initial ideas of Schrodinger's cat and entanglement. Quantum mechanics is weird. It has these interesting, cool consequences of enabling superposition and entanglement to exist. And then there's this idea that the best systems for simulating quantum systems should actually be quantum themselves. That was one of the origins of the idea for quantum computing. Another origin was the idea of testing the many worlds theory of quantum mechanics, which demonstrated that there are some tasks that need a quantum computer in order to implement them. Then the Deutsch-Joser algorithm is the first algorithm 
which shows that you can solve a task with a quantum computer with fewer steps than a classical computer. Then Shor's algorithm was the first which showed that you can get a big speed up on a actually really useful problem. So it can be much more effective on a very important problem of factorization of a large number into its prime factors. And it's actually a threat because a lot of our cybersecurity is based on the difficulty of this problem that quantum computers could actually solve efficiently. Then the theory of quantum error correction came along, which showed that the problem of noise in quantum computing, which causes errors, can in principle be overcome, which made quantum computing suddenly be a realistic possibility. Then the first quantum computers have been built. We can actually build quantum computers. We've reached the stage of quantum computers outperforming some classical algorithms for specific tasks. So our best classical computers are struggling to simulate quantum systems the, at the scale that quantum computers are now. And people have built chips with over a thousand qubits involved, showing that we can physically pack lots of these qubits together. And also there have been initial demonstrations of quantum error correction, showing that this theory of the idea that we can correct errors on a quantum computer can actually work. Things to look forward to to the future. One of them is reaching this milestone of useful quantum advantage of solving problems that are useful with a quantum computer faster than a classical computer. And also working towards this long-term goal of building a fully fault-tolerant quantum computer that can solve any problem we throw at it that can be solved faster by a quantum computer than a classical one. Thanks for joining me in this series of episodes introducing quantum computing. Happy to hear any questions you have about quantum computing. If there's some aspect that you'd want to know more about in future videos, or if there's another topic that you'd be interested in a quantum deep dive on. Look forward to hearing what you think.